Time to talk plumbing. Details on how I connected the tank to the sump. All right, so to hard plumb this tank to the sump, I did it in three different phases. So, and, and the reason why I'm saying three different phases is because I had to go through to uh, three different rooms. So the tank is in this uh, room right here in my finished basement. And um, I had to hard plumb it through this wall into the uh, room with the furnace and the hot water heater into this room that has the Royal Exclusive Dream Box, okay? So this was a... Um, this was a complicated plumbing project to say the least. And I've had a lot of experience doing this. I've done this for a few of my tanks. I really, really like remote sumps. I don't like to um, you know, have a lot of equipment underneath my, uh, my stands. I just like the room that I have in terms of a remote sump and be able to work around it and not being cramped. So that's why I go through all the effort. And let me tell you that this, uh, <laughs> this was not an easy project. I would have to say I probably spent about 40 hours, yep, 40 hours hard plumbing this tank into this room, into the sump. But uh, I do believe it is very much uh, worth the, uh, the time and the effort. So uh, just to kind of start off, what, um, what you're seeing in here is uh, Schedule 80 PVC piping. Um, I like to use Schedule 80 on the uh, on the the display side of the, uh, the fish tank because um, I kind of think that the um, plumbing looks better if it's exposed and you're not going to be covering up. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to cover it up with a bookcase or a piece of furniture. I like the industrial look. It's the, um, it's the look that I have in the, um, you know, my 187 gallon display tank. I plumbed it through the wall with this uh, Schedule 80 PVC piping. So, you know, I'm going to hang some of the, uh, the pictures that were on this wall back up around the, uh, the piping. And I think it's going to look pretty darn good. And um, well, at least that's what I'm, my, uh, my plan is. I'm going to keep the fingers crossed. So anyway, this was uh, not easy, as I mentioned. You have to do a, um, a lot of planning. You have to think about this stuff. You know, as you can see, the, uh, the PVC pipe here is at an angle. I wanted to make sure I had the proper pitch to go you know, through the, the couple of different rooms back to the, uh, to the dream box. Obviously, you need that for the drains. You want gravity to, to, to do its thing, but um, you really need to uh, take your time and, you know, to um, measure and to also take into consideration the angles. And, you know, as you can see, I've got, you know, a number of um, 90 degree elbows in here. And, you know, for the proper pitch for this uh, PVC piping, you know, those elbows have to be at the right, you know, proper angle. So you have to really use, um, um, you know, be patient and measure like three different times. And I also use a level, you know, when I want to make sure that something's all leveled out here. But, um, you know, so I started, I started out on the, uh, on the top and I worked my way down. So I started with the two, um, you know, drains on the top and these are one and one half inch drain pipes and the return lines, the two, um, PVC pipes below are one inch. So, you know, I took my time and, and really the first thing that I had done <clears throat> um, before I started doing the plumbing was I reinforced what was inside the wall. I, I wanted to make sure that I had a, um, some wooden bracing. So I, I, I cut some, um, some holes in a little piece of wood and I, I, screwed them, I, I screwed that wood into the studs inside of the wall just to make sure that the PVC pipe had, um, you know, more support than just the drywall. I don't want the, um, you know, the PVC piping to be um, um, 
button up against the drywall and using that as a support so you can see it's really really quite solid in terms of uh, what it currently is looking like right there so you know I started with the um, the top drain line and um, just made my cuts and made uh, very careful measurements I needed to um, you know take into account that um, I needed to uh, have a couple of different 90 degree uh, elbows. So I needed that spacing between the tank and the wall. I didn't want to have the tank butted very close up to the wall. I needed some room for those two 90 degree elbows that were going out. So, you know, I had to kind of plan ahead for that. I had to make sure that the, uh, the stand and the tank were at a certain distance. And, and I took those elbows before I even had the tank in here and made sure that I had, um, you know, measured out enough room behind the tank, you know, against the wall to be able to do this. So, like I've said, you got to plan. You really got to think about it. You got to think about all the different possibilities. So anyway, I got the first um, drain line in, and then what I did was, um, from that point, I worked, I worked my way down, and I did the, uh, the second drain line, and what I, uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to hang the uh, PVC piping from that um, first drain line and make sure that it's all uh, lined up parallel to the pipe above it. And that uh, also allows me to uh, make sure I've got the angle correct on the, uh, on the second drain line. And I'll go around the other side here <clears throat> to show you the, uh, the second uh, drain coming out of here. Um, you know, so I had to go a little uh, further out um, behind the, uh, you know, that, that first uh, drain line. I wanted to make sure it was all lined up at the right angle. Made those, you know, cuts and, and made sure everything was... Uh, kind of um, in line with one another. And then I, I, I started working on the, the two returns. So I did, you know, this return first. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I tried to, um, you know, make 90 degree angles and, and make sure it was uh, straight going into the, uh, into the tank in terms of this return. You know, again, you just want to make sure you, you take things into account. I like to use a, uh, a magnet on the, uh, the back glass. And I want to make sure that I have enough space to get the magnet to this side of the magnet uh, head on the outside of the tank. So that's why um, I went a few inches out that way. But, uh, you know, again, I had to be very careful in terms of the, uh, the 90 degree elbows that I used and wanted to make sure it was the right angle. So I hung, you know, this um, return line from the, uh, the drain line and just made sure that they were all very uh, much, uh, you know, parallel to one another. And once I had that angle all down, then I made the, uh, you know, I glued it into place. And then I did the, uh, the fourth and final uh, pipe, the last uh, return line um, underneath. And, and uh, you know, it's uh, something you got to just really, really take your time with and be careful about. And you also have to um, be aware that the uh, PVC glue and primer can be quite uh, messy. So use a ton of tarps. Make sure that... Um, you know, you use newspaper if you need to, or rags. You just got to do what you can to, to cover up the, uh, the walls and the stand and the other pipe that uh, you've already installed, or else it, uh, it's going to look sloppy. You don't want sloppiness. So that was phase one. So for phase two, I'm in, in the utility room with the furnace and the hot water heater. And, you know, step one in here was... Um, you know, I, we, uh, we open up the drywall and, and this is where the, um, the wooden bracing with the holes in it were installed into the studs. And then once I did that, we, um, you know, had it, uh, screwed the drywall back in and then I started working on the, uh, on the plumbing. So it, um, definitely what you got to do is, um, again, you got to be concerned with the pitch and you got to be concerned with the angle, the, um, you know, these pipes right here, I believe, are uh, relatively uh, level, but um, these right here are going down at an angle. You know, so for the drains, you don't want to you don't want to have anything that's going to be angling up. You want at least, um, you know, flat in the middle, but um, pretty much going down at, at an angle for, um, for the majority of the uh, on the run. The other thing that I made sure was I didn't want to have <coughs> the um, the piping butting up against the wall too close. I needed some room to um, to operate in terms of making the um, you know gluing in the, the 90 degree elbows to the PVC piping so I, I you know I just wanted to uh, to have enough space between the wall and the pipe 
to room to operate and um you know so you could see there's there's plenty of room here uh you know i i could have if i wanted to come straight out here and straight uh into the wall but um that would have um made it tough for the folks that do the maintenance on the furnace i did so i don't want them uh bumping into it and now the furnace is turning on <laughs> and one, one thing about the furnace what uh what i'll mention here is that um the reason why I wanted to um, to do it to the left of the furnace is because you know I had another option. I could have, if I wanted to, and this is gonna be kind of tough to see. It's really tough to see, but um, there is a spot in there where I could have plumbed right next to the furnace and run the um, you know the piping through there. But this furnace does get hot. And I think that's the last thing I would have, you know, really wanted to have uh, happen is for the uh, PVC pipe to uh, potentially get heated up. I don't, I'm not concerned that it would have gotten melted, but it probably would have heated the uh, the tank water up higher than what I wanted uh, it to be heated up to. So, you know, I could have, uh, I could have tried that, but I felt this was a much more um, viable option and more practical option, even though there's more PVC pipe showing on the display side uh, of the tank. So that was uh, phase two. All right, so we're on to phase three, and this is the sump room. And the, uh, the first thing that I, uh, I did in this room was we uh, removed the drywall, right, and put in some additional wooden bracing for the PVC pipes to go through. And again, you know, it just, you don't want the drywall to be the main support in terms of the PVC piping. And, and I just want, you know, wanted to really reinforce it with the uh, wooden bracing. So I, th I think that worked out really well. But one thing I want to point out also here is, you know, again, <clears throat> this is an instance where you really have to think ahead and uh, plan things out. So as you can see, the two drains right here are um, kind of blocking the two returns. So in this instance, it uh, did not make sense to work top down in terms of doing the drains and then the two uh, returns after that. What I wanted to do and make it a lot easier, give me a lot more room to work in terms of making the glued uh, connections with the PVC pipe is to work from the uh, returns on up to the drains. So the first thing I did was uh, I worked on this uh, return and this is a pretty simple uh, return. It's a pretty, you know, I used a couple of 90 degree elbows that allowed me to um, get around behind the dream box, behind what uh, is called the uh, controller cockpit, right? Through this hole and into the display tank. Now the Second return is a little bit more complicated. And the reason for that is because I wanted to plumb in a frag tank and a um, water changing system, automatic water changing system. And so for my, <clears throat> my current dream box for my 187 gallon tank, I've got that set up. And I wanted to mimic that with the new dream box. So the plumbing on this uh, dream box allows me to pump water out, right, through a uh, return line up along the ceiling into the slop sink. And so I have these two 55 gallon drums. This one is uh, RODI makeup water. Okay, so I've got my RODI unit right here and it just goes into this 55 gallon drum. And I've got a uh, pump on the inside of this uh, drum that can pump water through this PVC piping underneath the uh, slop sink into this 55 gallon drum, which, which is where I mix the, uh, the salt. So this is the new salt water that I pump in to um, you know, replenish the water I take out after a water change. So I have a, uh, I've got a pump in the bottom here, okay, that um, goes through PVC piping underneath the bench into this dream box. So I wanted to replicate that system and tap into the, uh, the two 55 gallon drums with a new dream box. Why add a couple of more 55 gallon drums if you don't have to, okay? So what you notice here is I have a, um, I got a couple of um, valves and um, I'm gonna get back to these two, but um, essentially the, uh, the valves allow me to pump uh, water to the old dream box or the new dream box. But so getting back to the, uh, to the plumbing over here, I've got some other valves that I want to talk about and I'm going to turn a light on here so hopefully it'll be easier to see this stuff. So for the uh, for the second return, 
Well, you know, as I mentioned, it's, it's multi-purpose. It's, it's going to serve a couple of different things. So right here, the, um, the return coming out, right, is um, one place where it's going to is the display tank. So if the valve is turned that way, then this is going to push water through this uh, PVC pipe behind the uh, dream box and back out to the uh, display tank. So that's the second return to the tank, okay? But as you can see, I've got a, um, another valve right here. And the purpose in this valve is to feed a frag tank, okay? And so this valve right here, which is uh, off right now, is not connected. And I'll, I'll show you the plumbing for the frag tank in a little bit. But, um, you know, this would basically be able to feed a frag tank if I had the valve opened up like that. So water pumping, right, <clears throat> through this valve, back out through that pipe, as well as, you know, because it's opened up a little bit, up through this uh, piping and up through this valve. This valve would be turned off, right, so it would be forced up through this valve. Now the purpose behind this valve is for the water change system. So, you know, when I do a water change, I shut everything down. So I shut all the pumps down. And once I do that, with all these valves in place, it's a, it's a pretty simple process. So I essentially would turn this valve, make sure I turn it the right direction. All right, so that's going to prevent water when I turn the pumps back on, pumping back to the display tank. This valve I don't have to worry about. It's going to stay open, okay? But the uh, valve for the frag tank, I want to make sure that it's um, closed. And then I'll open up this valve, right? So now water is going to be directed from the pump in the sump, that second pump, through uh, the PVC piping. And so what I did was I, um, I put piping, you know, through here, going up to the ceiling, along, um, you know, right here, along that um, beam, up along here. It's got a little valve here just in case. I, I keep that uh, closed when I'm not using it. And then, um, you know, I've got some uh, vinyl flexible tubing that's hooked up. And when I want to do a water change, I just make sure that this thing is uh, in the slop sink. And when I'm not using it, I just, uh, you know, fold it away and make sure that it's out of the way. All right, so getting back to these two valves that uh, are hooked up to the 55-gallon uh, drum that has the, uh, the fresh salt water that's made up for the uh, water changes. You know, as you can see right here, I've got the two valves, and I spliced these two valves, um, you know, in here. And what this allows me to do is to uh, direct the new uh, makeup salt water into one of the two tanks. So the way the valves are um, currently configured right here in terms of the, the knobs turn, it allows me to pump it underneath the, uh, the bench to that dream box. But, you know, if I um, turn the valves as so, then that will allow me to pump the new makeup water to the new dream box because I <clears throat> did some uh, plumbing, <laughs> some extra plumbing work right here. So I, um, I installed this PVC piping up on the ceiling, goes along that beam up there, right? Let me turn the light on here so you can kind of see a little easier, right? So it's going along here into this corner, put a couple of 90 degree elbows, and I, uh, I ran it underneath this beam right here. Okay, so it's going along up here, um, down this wall, and uh, underneath this one inch PVC pipe. And then uh, put another 90 degree elbow in here. Allows me to run up, you know, along the wall right here, along the dream box, into this inlet right here. So, whoa. That was the, um, the hard plumbing in the sump room to the dream box. Again, it was um, pretty complicated, but uh, I like to have this uh, sort of a hard plumb thing set up because it just makes it life a lot easier. It, it gives me uh, the opportunity to do automatic water changes. I think it takes maybe uh, five minutes to do a 30 gallon water change with this system. Um, I mean, that's what it takes with, with that uh, dream box. So I imagine it's gonna be a similar process here. But all right, next uh, let's talk about plumbing in for the frag tank. All right, so plumbing for the frag tank. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see, now I have a bench over the dream box, and this bench is serving two purposes. It is now a work area for me. I lost the work area when I installed this second frag tank on this bench. So I am really pumped to have a workspace again.
But the primary purpose of the bench is to add this frag tank. It's a 50 gallon low boy frag tank that I've added to the uh, 225 gallon peninsula display. Nice backsplash I got there, a little Royal exclusive piece of the crate from the dream box. So I figured I'd put some poly on that. And uh, yeah, I'm digging it. Makes a great backsplash for this frag tank. Anyway, let's go over the plumbing. It's really, as I mentioned, straightforward. I've got one inch PVC going in. That is a three quarter inch lock line, but one quarter inch PVC, one inch PVC, sorry, going in. I've got these two valves that I was showing you before. This valve right here, once I fire up the frag tank, and I'm not going to be using this frag tank for a while because the tank is just started in terms of the uh, peninsula tank. But once I get fired up, I'm going to be turning this valve a little bit. This valve right here is for the water changing system, so obviously that would be closed while the frag tank is running. Just threw a couple of elbows in here into the, um, into the tank, so that is a return line. In terms of the drain, it is a one and one half inch drain. The overflow box is bigger on this frag tank than it is on this frag tank. And this is actually three quarter inch PVC going in to the return. And it, this is one inch in terms of the drain. I wanted to get some higher turnover rate on the new frag tank. So that's why I went one inch and in terms of the return and one and one half inch with the drain. So, you know, pretty straightforward in terms of the plumbing. I like to put unions on my drains and return lines for the frag tank in case I ever need to detach it. So, you know, here's the one and one half inch PVC piping. It's going underneath the bench and into the inlet in the dream box. And now I have one of those one and one half inch inlets left. But that is pretty much it. Plumbed directly into the uh, system. Got a nice 50 gallon frag tank when I need it. Anyway, many thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I will put links to Marine Depot and Reef Bum in the video description below. See you next time.